Welcome to Rick's 130th Scale Models. My name is Rick. Today I'm going to be reviewing this new kit. It's by Ryfield Models and it's the 135th Scale Canadian version of the Leopard 2A6M. Now Canada had the Leopard 1 in Afghanistan and needed a little more upgrade and ended up getting 20 uh, German Leopard 2A6s that they had upgraded with the mine protection and the supplemental armor on the sides and they received those right around uh, 2010 and used them. Now eventually they ended up buying about a hundred uh, Dutch Leopards and they upgraded them to a different version of the M for the uh, Canadian Army but this model is for that original early production that they received for the war in Afghanistan. So the model itself is, uh, to be very upfront, very amazing. It's awesome. Uh, the detail level in there is just, I was really, really excited when I started looking through it. Uh, looking forward to building it. Uh, looking forward to showing you about it right now. So let's get started. So let's start with the instructions. Uh, this is probably one of the longer sets of instructions I've seen, um, but it's pretty detailed, uh, as you can see here shortly. Um, simple beginning, not a lot of detail information, just your basic uh, tools needed, and um, not for kids and all that kind of stuff. And then you jump right into your sprue sheets. Now, the first thing you're going to see here is there's a lot of sprue sheets. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 spruce sheets and a, a PE sheet, a, a turret, and uh, upper portion of the lower hull. Uh, so lots of parts on each spruce sheet, uh, lots of things to build. So when you jump into it, uh, you have your lower hull. Um, assembly process on top of that adding in your uh, supplemental M class armor um, because Ryfield does have a full interior version um, you can see here that you've got the inside of the uh, rear uh, ventilation for the engine area um, there's no engine in this but they do show uh, that part being done um, one of the other neat things about this kit and nobody else has done it is every single access point actually has a hatch where you can make it open or close so if you're going to build a model where you've got a vehicle in partial disassembly this is the kit to get uh, it definitely does a lot the uh, axles um, actually uh, move and have uh, the torsion bars in them uh, another neat thing that you'll see in some of the other models but not all uh, but rifle did something new that nobody else has done the front road wheel also articulates so you've got the assembly process for that where that part actually moves in and out and that actually is covered here um, you've got the uh, hydraulic functions of this part here um, so that you can make it um, move just like the axles move so another new and also really neat aspect um, the other thing Rifle did here is they have, like a lot of the other kits, the little uh, plastic grommet that goes inside the uh, bogey wheels or the road wheels and the uh, drive sprocket so that you can uh, stick them on and off for uh, painting and weathering and things like that. Um, I always like that quality. And then it has a tremendous amount of detail added in to different parts of the vehicle that uh, I haven't seen on any other model. Some models will have some of it, but not all of it. Uh, they really seem to spend a lot of time here hitting parts and doing things that uh, nobody else has done. The uh, track assembly is kind of your standard uh, track you'll see along the lines. Now they do have an aftermarket product of a... Uh, resin track which is 
more of a rubber band style or pin but this is your type where you'll glue uh, a top and a bottom and then you have your rods in the middle to uh, go through a little bit of tedious process but definitely gives a nice results um, I built other models with the same aspect and it, it looks really sharp it takes a little bit of time but you definitely get a high quality model out of that uh, going through continuing on uh, the other thing I like here is, is they have really good instructions with kind of colors where to glue uh, some of the PE sheets um, they indicate them this is a whole part of the PE sheet world that no other model company has done and not even in aftermarket PE stuff uh, very impressed there um, your uh, toe points all have these uh, pins the other thing that they have too is they have a uh, piece of metal that goes over that uh, to uh, make it look real nice and uh, more realistic then you've got your uh, Canadian supplemental armor plate on top of the driver's area there uh, the engine block uh, can be open or closed there's no engine but it doesn't have all the rest of the parts but as I said before they have a future model coming out with that and that would be really neat to see and then you can see here these different access inspection points um, and then the fuel here those all have uh, removable hatches the other neat thing is they actually have real handles that look authentic size so it's another high quality uh, detail to it and once again another first um, these access points and, st and storage boxes on the sides of the vehicle for different things um, those doors come open so uh, if you wanted to have something going on in there and, and scratch out that area um, in this kit you can do that uh, very nice working your way through all the different uh, aspects then you get into adding your supplemental armor now here's the one part of the instructions that until I start building the model it, it it may make total sense but at this point I'm kind of at a loss as to what they were getting at assuming um, they say do not cut away and they've got these uh, basically the pins and the nut, nuts that uh, hold on these side skirts I'm, I'm assuming that you're going to cut those off to add on these parts here but uh, until I actually start building it I'm not 100% positive and the way they do these instructions uh, you know do not cut away if choose the 2021 upgrade solution set well that's the only place anywhere you see that indication I'm assuming the supplemental armor is what they're referring to but uh, at this point I don't know yet going through uh, adding up all these parts for your uh, grenade protection and then you start working on the turret now uh, once again here's another part that is probably the most detailed para commander's periscope I've seen yet they actually have uh, in the model itself all the extra uh, PE sheets to make that look more realistic where other models you have to get aftermarket products to get that um, they have your uh, sight for your gunner and the windshield wiper that goes on that uh, another neat aspect uh, I've never seen in any other model uh, working your way through uh, looking at the different detail parts continuing on lots of extra details um, the air conditioning unit that goes on the back now the initial versions of these the pictures I've seen did not have this air conditioner here this model does so that was something that was added on later on um, I haven't verified at what point that was but depending on the when you're building this model that may be something to research out then they have the uh, stowage compartment up front where you can have the hatch open and they have the uh, M4 rifles in there for the Canadian Army or you can have it closed and as I said before I like the fact that Rightfield puts color in their pictures and art so it kind of helps you know what you're referring to and what you're looking at they have lots of hatches that you can have open or closed um, all these different stores locations uh, I know the Germans store their uh, the infantry uh, equipment for their like the helmet and their uh, backpacks are stored in here you'll have your uh, wire 
for your communications line stored in there or on the back and they give you multiple options they don't have any wire on it so that's something you'd have to add yourself um, but uh, definitely uh, good options nice nice well done continuing on adding all the supplemental armor your grenade launchers different things they don't have your little chains here um, in the PE sheet but you can easily uh, modify that with some string or uh, other things to upgrade the model itself that would be one of the few things they didn't add in the kit that you could do um, but there's not a lot of other things to add on <clears throat> The barrel is a really neat setup. It's a single uh, tube casting, so there's no uh, gluing two tubes together. And then they have a uh, resin printed front uh, part of the barrel, which is really good, high quality detail. You can put a uh, British machine gun on, as the Canadians use, or you can put the uh, standard German MG machine gun on, depending on which what you're doing. Um, now. One of the things that they did in this model, the first model I've seen them do, is on the back of all Leopard tanks, right next to the rear view camera, is a small antenna whip. Now this is for backing up so that the commander kind of has a bearing as far as where they're going. Um, they actually have that, and they have the little ball that goes on the top, and uh, the wire you basically put in like this. And that sits on the back of the vehicle right back here. It's a, probably 18 inches long and um, they actually have that in the model that's the first time I've ever seen that really neat there now one of the criticisms I will have of this vehicle would be this picture um, anybody who builds any of the modern NATO stuff knows that uh, the NATO camo pattern is very specific but because of the way they've done this you can't see it and when Canada got these they were all NATO camouflage patterns now they did add the Barracuda armor on later on but when they first got them they didn't have that uh, thermal blanket to put on the vehicle which was in a desert pattern um, so they still showed the uh, NATO tricolor camel pattern but because of the way this is set up you can't see what the pattern is so you would be guessing to do it and that would just be kind of an accuracy criticism but they do have um, the supplemental armor it was painted that uh, like a deserty tan type color uh, which they show here and then here they just show some pictures of the uh, model assembled uh, some of the hatches you can see all the different things you can have open on it uh, the other thing I didn't mention is this is the first model that has all of the padlocks that are all over the vehicle for all these different accents points they actually have all the padlocks a really neat uh, aspect there and then the uh, last part of the page is just another picture this is the same picture you'll see on the internet advertisements of the model the first sheet I'm going to look at here is the uh, there's two of this this is going to have your axles your PE sheets uh, some of the parts for the lower hull, and some parts for the uh, turret on it uh, along with your uh, transportation locking pins for railroad transportation here um, these are really good quality detail and accurate looking I was very impressed with these the bogey wheels are real nice they look uh, size wise accurate uh, some of the models have them a little thicker looking these are nice well done um, the drive sprockets a nice size very accurate looking also your armor plating on the side that can be open or closed is uh, fairly thin so it looks a little more accurate to uh, some of the other models that you have this aspect it's it's a little thick looking uh, really nice quality and then like I said you have some different access points there's the hatches for inspection points and fueling points this sheet will have your supplemental armor um, you can buy a Ryfield aftermarket product which makes this all PE sheets um, you have to bend all this I think these are pretty nice the way they are and I'm not down talking the PE sheet aspect but they did a really good job here and, and you know it definitely would look good if you built it this way although the PE sheets would look more accurate because it's real thin metal um, this is really sharp very very good quality this sheets gonna have some of your supplements for the Canadian version you're gonna have your uh, 
driver's uh, armor plating there, your M class aren't under protection here, some of your air conditioner and different plates here, different parts, the uh, British machine gun, uh, this is more of your camera system, uh, more parts of different aspects of the vehicle. Uh, one of the things you'll notice in this is well, whatever went here is missing, well that would be your umbrella. They've actually taken this and packaged it really nice in a uh, padded packaging so it stays protected and doesn't break. Uh, where all the pictures I've seen of it prior to a release showed it just on this, uh, you know, probably in this format or something. But they took a took the time to package it separately to protect it. It seems pretty hardy but um, Obviously, they could crush it and break it and disform it. Here's going to be parts of your turret. You've got your uh, side armor plating, your barrel, uh, part of the barrel here, the uh, toolboxes that go underneath these plates here, part of your uh, breech system. Uh, this is the mounting for your armor plating that goes in the front part of it. This is parts of your barrel, uh, toolboxes and the more toolboxes and then parts of your uh, electronics. Uh, the older versions they had the uh, machine guns uh, for the uh, anti-aircraft machine gun and the uh, machine gun, the coax, were underneath this plate and then uh, the embers and they added some modifications and you can do both with this model. That's what that is. More, more parts, uh, you have all the different hatches that uh, you can have open or closed, uh, fueling and access inspection points, some of the armor plating, uh, this would be your interior grill for the engine compartment area, tools, your uh, siphoning hose here, these parts you're not going to be using, or that's the poles for uh, camo netting and, and the uh, rod for cleaning the barrel, um, more camera, different components here, the uh, locking ring to uh, have the barrel locked in the rear position. Uh, this is the first model where you can actually have that up or down. Here would be the up and deployed version and then the stowed version here. Uh, all the other models I've ever seen, you, you only have this option here. So that's a really neat uh, aspect too. A lot of uh, big parts here. Here's your uh, engine plate. As I said before, you can see all of these different access points, inspection points, and fueling, and that they have the panel, so you can have them open or closed. Uh, really, really neat idea, and definitely nice. And then here's your exhaust ports. You can have those open or closed if you're depending on what you're doing. Your uh, side skirt. What is also really nice about this kit is the size of these are accurate. They're small. They're just foot rails for soldiers to climb up. Um, a lot of models, this is way out of gauge where this is a lot thinner and uh, more delicate looking and accurate. Very nice job. Uh, the uh, Rear of the engine block area, fans, uh, hatch for the driver, and then the uh, armor plating on the side, uh, those parts. Here's going to be your turret. You've got the base of the turret. Uh, this is going to be your simulator, uh, some of the hatches on the back of the turret, your ammunition blow off hatch, uh, the side skirting, the uh, front skirting uh, for the armor added protection and then you've got your uh, main drive ring here that goes inside the turret that uh, the gear would turn to uh, traverse the turret. Um, you've also got real good detail underneath here most of this you'll never be able to see but the fact that they took the time to do it is nice. On top of that they've got really good weld lines here uh, you can see the beading uh, very nice. These are things uh, when it comes to weathering especially in a dusty environment it's really going to make that jump out and look sharp. Another uh, part this is a lot of the parts to hang the um, supplemental armor on all the different mounting points rods and uh, different parts on top of that your antennas now you can do wire antennas the antennas they come with this model are about the right size they look pretty good uh, the only challenge you're going to have is cleaning it up in these points and not breaking it um, but uh, definitely a nice looking antenna they've got the spring and everything uh, really sharp we did definitely a good job there lots of parts for the turret um, hatches, sights, uh, covers, plates. You've got your MG machine gun, 
really 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 good clean quality there uh, the other neat part is the commander's hatch actually has the piston that makes it move up and down whereas the loader's hatch has a big spring that flips it open uh, you have to have it open or closed this has that device in uh, so it definitely uh, adds a level of quality there the uh, commander's site is really delicate parts really small very accurate scale uh, really well done there here's going to be one of three of the uh, tracks sections um, pretty much the same standard look as most of the other models out there uh, you do have the uh, cleat this way so if you wanted to have the track with the snow cleats on you have those here a few of those to put on um, but you've got the, you know, the part that the road wheel rides on, the, the rubber part that sits on the ground, and then the pin goes in the middle with the uh, alignment pin right here. Um, these are something that, especially in the desert model, you can chip these up really nice and uh, make them look torn up. They also give you a little jig here. Um, works okay. It's not really awesome, but it definitely helps if you're a first-time builder of these types of things. Here's going to be parts of the lower hall. You're going to have the sides, uh, really good clear detail, all the different little aspects of things, the weld lines and that. Uh, looking at real pictures, this is right about where everything is, so uh, really nice there. You've got your uh, supplemental supports here they've added in, your emergency access or uh, escape hatch, the uh, engine locking bolts here, uh, some of the drain points. Uh, and the different blocking nuts here. And the insides you can see, same thing. This is going to be your uh, top of your lower hull. Uh, really delicate plastic. Uh, they did a good job of not making it overly beefy. Uh, it's thin, accurate, real sharp lines. Uh, really nice job, all the bolts, different things like that. Really, really impressed. Here's going to be the top portion of the turret. Uh, the anti-skid plating is really accurate. They have all of your uh, weld lines, which are really nice looking, uh, clean and uh, crisp. Your uh, siding system here, all the uh, sides. You have the uh, blowout hatch for the ammunition storage area can be uh, done there. And then on top of that, you have this big stowage area in the back here and here, which are all uh, able to be opened or closed depending on how you want to do it. The uh, sides are really impressive. You've got your old ammunition uh, access point here which they welded up many generations ago. Uh, the weld lines are really nice looking. This side same thing. Uh, real good weld lines. Clear detail. Well done. Very impressive. This is going to be your uh, clear sheet which is going to have your periscopes, your uh, sighting system, and then uh, your warning beacon, uh, your uh, commander sight, your uh, tail lights and headlights, all in clear plastic so you can uh, paint them accordingly however you want to do those. Really nice good quality parts. This is going to be your uh, front part of your barrel. Uh, really good high quality uh, printing, all the angles. Just a little bit of the flashing to pull off the uh, inside here, but uh, definitely a nice job there. Nice little extra. Here's going to be your decal sheet. Uh, they've got all the warning placards, the different locations for the different hatches, along with your Canadian emblems, your uh, barrel stripes, um, lots of little decals that go in different places on the vehicle. Uh, most models don't have all this, um, but in the real world they have all these different aspects and they show it here. They've got all the decals. So uh, a little bit of work, but definitely a nice result. Here's going to be your PE sheet. Uh, very, very thin, very delicate, uh, amazing detail and quality. You have your baskets, uh, all these different uh, pieces here for different aspects, hatches, covers, locks. Uh, just lots of parts, lots of little things to build. Uh, something you'd probably spend uh, 
you know, 10 or more dollars for her to get a PE sheet with all this extra detail and it comes in the model. So uh, they definitely uh, took care of your customers in this part. So that's the overall look at the kit. Um, I mean, it's amazing. I, I really am impressed with it. I haven't built it. Um, although I doubt it, it may end up being real challenging. Um, I built some other right field kits and, uh, you know, they worked out really nice and a few parts here to figure out in there, but like all models, but a uh, really nice results. Um, I think that this kit is probably going to be one of the nicest leopards you're going to see out there. Uh, the price range is about average, it's a little on the more expensive side, depending on where you look. Um, but you're getting a lot more for your money, so it's definitely not overpriced. Uh, the uh, quality level of it, I, I just can't speak highly enough of it. Um, I'm impressed by Ryfield. I think they did a really good job. Now. They do have the uh, German version of the 2A6 coming out next month, uh, sometime February 2022. And then sometime this summer, uh, 2022, spring, summertime, and I'm not real sure what yet, but I'm hoping sooner than later, they have a full interior version coming out of the uh, 2A6 Leopard. Uh, that will be amazing. And looking at the parts they have here, um, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Now. One of the things I'm doing is I am just about at a thousand subscriptions. So to celebrate that, what I'm going to be doing is taking this kit. Um, I got a couple of them, and brand new in the box, steel steeled. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give it away. So what I'm asking is if you want to be a part of the uh, lottery for this. Uh, go into the comment section and write a comment. Um, anybody who puts a comment down, unless you tell me you don't want it, um, I'm going to put your name in after 30 days of the video being released, after I get to a thousand also, because it's kind of the my little party um, and rewarding everybody who's uh, watched my videos, I'm going to roll and figure out who gets it and then get a hold of them and I'm going to ship it to them anywhere in the world. So if you're in the world, I'll get it to you. Brand new in the box, just as I just showed. So please, like, subscribe, hit the bell, make a comment. If you like it, you don't like it, you tell me. If you don't like the video, please give me a comment as to why. Because I can't do a better job unless you tell me what I did wrong. And if you just say I don't like, it doesn't really tell me anything, so it's never gonna change. But I appreciate everyone. Thank you. Awesome model. Ryfield did a great job. Ryfield, please bring out more German stuff. Um, it's This isn't German, it's Canadian, but it's a leopard, so good enough. Anyway, take care everyone. See you on the next video, and happy modeling. Bye-bye.